Welcome to the Middle Class to Millionaires podcast, a no-nonsense show designed to help you punch fear in the face and create the life you've always dreamed of. Now, here are your hosts, Vince and Christian. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Middle Class to Millionaires. Uh, We are recording a podcast today with a very special guest, but we are now also on video. So, with that being said, Vince? Yeah, so we are fortunate to have the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Steve Panate. Uh, Steve, let's just get right into it. Who are you and uh, what do you do? Man, hey guys, I am so excited to be here on the show, uh, on this podcast. I have seen you guys started from scratch, what it's done, where it's headed, and I'm excited. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would highly recommend you subscribe to this podcast. It's amazing to watch their journey to really become millionaires. That's the goal, right? That's, well, that's yeah. what we're trying for. the for. podcast, <laughs> at least, you know? So, uh, so it's amazing. So I am a, a, uh, a, um, I'm a real estate agent, uh, slash broker of a company, uh, here, uh, uh here in the Dallas, but with areas with offices now in Houston, San Antonio, Austin, uh, and I'm about to open up uh, in in El Paso next month. So that's really exciting. You're taking over the world, aren't you? In Phoenix? <laughs> Did you say Phoenix? Also Phoenix too. Correct. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So it's exciting. Yeah, he's everywhere. A lot of real estate. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, hey, don't forget about us when you get to the top, right? <laughs> Wait. What was it? Who are you? Huh? No, I'm kidding. You said. Oh, okay. Wow, well, man. Already. <laughs> dunk. Just, just that quick. Dad jokes. When you got two kids, man, they just get even better or worse. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, so, how did you get started in real estate? So, uh, okay. So, um, funny enough, I was actually a social worker uh, 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 for the state of Arizona, and so being in social work, I, I was helping uh, kids find foster homes. Uh, it, yeah, and so so on the side as well, at the same time while I was doing that, I was also very involved in ministry. Uh, 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 but the way I was actually making my real money at that time was by flipping houses. So back in, you know, 2009, uh, uh, Phoenix, Arizona was probably hit the hardest in America, also Vegas was hit really hard and so on when it came to real estate. Uh, and so houses were super cheap. I remember one of my friends, uh, uh, his father was really involved in real estate as an investor. He asked me for some money to partner with him on one house. And all of a sudden I learned how much money could be made flipping a house, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. Uh, 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 and so, so, that's really how I got my feet wet, and then once the market started to 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 uh, really pick up in 2014, I, I I actually really have a passion for people, and I wanted to give residential real estate a try, and so I, uh, uh, um, uh, so I went, I got licensed, uh, and I went all in full time 2014 as a real estate agent. Uh, and so I remember, you know, uh, uh, at that point, one of my favorite things is marketing. So I was, uh, uh, I would consider pretty, pretty knowledgeable when it came to marketing. And so my first year I sold over 30 homes, you know, wow. when the average agent does between six and 12, if your sphere is really big, yeah. If you're lucky, if you're all, you, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, if you're working hard and so on. I remember my first year really changed my life, and like honestly, after that year, it's just kind of like just flew, you know, wow. from there and so on. And so it's exciting, you know. Now we've serviced, uh, you know, hundreds of families. Uh, now, uh, as a broker, I love seeing real estate agents succeed and helping them expand their own businesses. Uh, and so it's exciting. 
Yeah, that's cool. But before we get to our next question, though, I want to touch on what you just said about you like helping families. I think a lot of people say things, you know, that sometimes maybe they mean a little bit, but Steve really does like helping families. I remember you shared a, uh, a story a couple weeks ago about a single mom, I think it was, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who uh, got keys to her house, and you were literally in tears. I was. On, on Instagram, and it was really cool to see because, like, you actually you actually care about the people that you that you serve, and a lot of people are in it for the money, and that's fine, but you have, obviously, you want to make money, but you're in it to actually help people, like you actually say. You know, look at this. On that, okay, so so I honestly wasn't expecting, like it's funny, you know, everybody uh, 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 wants to be successful. Everybody wants to make money. If you say no, I don't believe you, you know? <laughs> True. You know, inside of everyone, there's this, you know, innate uh, uh, self of honestly wanting better, wanting more, wanting to improve, you know, in every in every part of life, you know, whether it's your marriage, whatever it is, you know, yep. innate inside of us, mm-hmm. everyone always wants wants uh, uh, to do better. Now, if I'm honest with you, when I started real estate, I did not think I would see, you know, a form of success <clears throat> so fast. And yeah. so, uh, 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 and so, one of the things I started seeing. Uh, uh, was that, you know, as an investor before that, I wasn't a big time investor, you know, but I had flipped some houses, you know, mm-hmm. made some money and so on. But you never or I, I would never experience, you know, who was actually buying the houses and so on, you know. Yeah. And so uh, 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 and so as I made the switch over to a real estate agent. I really started to see how hard people work just to buy a house. You yeah. know, mm-hmm. you know, you know, people people sweat mm-hmm. every single day in order to, you know, save up money. You know, I remember look at this. Mm-hmm. This impacted me so much. So watch this thing out. It was uh, 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 it was one evening. Um, I was meeting up with family uh, to show them a house. And uh, 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 it was about 6 p.m., okay? So, so the wife um, shows up first with her kids, okay? Her husband, who worked, uh, uh, who worked uh, uh, um, as a AC tech, okay? Shows up about 20 minutes later, okay? He shows up in his van, okay? <laughs> in his work clothes, sweating. Okay, and then I remember, okay, hearing this, and it, and it honestly, uh, 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 um, really marked me a lot. So, 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 so his wife asked him, "Hey, what do you think about this house?" Okay, and then he literally says this. He says, "Honestly, I'm never home. I'm always working, so it's fine with me." Wow. Okay, and I'm telling you, even right now, I'm getting, you know, like, uh, 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 I'm getting uh, emotional because it really hit me how hard this guy was working in hopes of buying his family a house. Mm -hmm. And it shook me so hard, and I never forget that moment. And from that moment forward, it, 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 it 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 uh, uh um uh it honestly brought me back to when my mom as a uh, um uh, uh as a single mother of four boys you know i honestly never knew my father until i was 18 years old wow okay and so i remember when she purchased her first house i was what like 13 years old I think it was, you know, and then how how hard she worked, you know, so that she could she, she uh, 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 how hard she worked to be in a position where she was able to purchase a house as a single mom, four boys. And it's crazy because I remember the real estate agent when we closed. OK, she, OK, she calls him and says, hey. So where are my keys at? What do I do? And this agent literally said to her, hey, 
There's a key under the rug. <laughs> Go ahead and access your house. It's very personal. <laughs> you know? And so it shook me. I said, no one on the planet literally deserves an experience like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and so, 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 uh, 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 um, so, 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 yes, you know, to me, real estate is very personal, not only from personal experience, but also being able to see, you know, families every single week working so hard to obtain that dream. It's a big moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it really is. I mean, yeah. it's a game changer for a lot of people, you know, it's there for most people, it's the biggest investment that they'll ever make. For sure. Well, Steve, uh, what tips would you have for those wanting to become an agent or for even new agents that are just just getting in the game? For sure. Um, look at this. I would say this is an industry. This is a industry where you have to go all in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I know so many people, okay, on Instagram, they're, hey, Steve, what if I want to do this, you know, on the side, okay? This isn't <laughs> a on the side gig, Yeah. you know? Now I get it, okay, look at this. There is a process, okay, that you can work up to it, okay? But if your mindset from the start is on the side, mm-hmm. extra money, okay, just stay away from the industry. That's good. Yeah. Man, you know, even with uh, even just if you don't want to be a, an agent, an investor on the side will only get you so far. A hundred percent. Yeah. You know, you know, they, 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 this is, OK, look, this. I understand some people can't initially go all in. OK, but OK, this is what I am referring to. You have to be all in mentally. Mm-hmm. You have to be all in in your heart. OK. You have to be all in in what you do. This cannot be just I will do it whenever I feel like doing it. Okay, there has to be the end goal of this mm. to be successful in this industry. Your end goal should be what must I do now so that I can go full time as soon as possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it has to be an all in mentality on this. Whether you're an investor. And or you just want to do real estate, whatever it is, the end goal is this. You want to go all in on this. And so from the get go, your mindset, your heart has to be, I am going to go all in on this. Yeah. That's yeah, so good. That is good. <laughs> we, we often preach about mindset and mentality and how mm-hmm. vital it is to you need mindset before you can do anything else. And very true. without yeah. that mindset, you're not going to get very far. 100%, yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Because yeah. sure. if you're not going all in, I mean, what's the point? You should just go all in. You should want to do everything with excellence. Absolutely. Where, where were we talking? Was this recently or? No, I was in. I was in a, a, a meeting yesterday um, with a, a certain group, and, and one of their core values for their um, ministry was excellence. Wow. And they were just talking about how, you know, we should want to do everything with excellence. And obviously, you can get biblical with it, but uh, it was just really humbling to be in there because this certain ministry, what they're doing is some game changing stuff, life changing stuff. And they really do it with excellence. And I just heard that in, in their, in their short meeting. And I met with the owner of it afterwards and he was telling me some of the stuff that they do. And like my mind was being blown. So for sure, you know, look at this, he's out real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. On that note. Okay. Excellence. (laughs) This is why excellence is a must. I love that. Okay. Here's why I look at this. On the other side of everything you do is a human being. <laughs> I knew you were going there. I love it. Huh? I love it. I knew you were going there. Okay. I love that. On the other side of everything we do is a person. Mm-hmm. Okay. The moment you go half on something, okay, is the moment you are doing a disservice <laughs> to a person. Yeah. That's so good. Mm-hmm. It's so important, okay, that our our mindset, our heart should be that of excellence because everything you do influences people on the other side of what you're doing. Yeah, and that yeah. that can that can be clients, it can be your family members, it can or be, a flip. Yeah, yeah, I mean everything is tied to a human being. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Steve, uh, you know you're taking over the world, and you have bosses <laughs> popping Not up here and there. <laughs> So, so when did you feel it was time to transition to a brokerage and start hiring agents? Uh, you know, okay, so check this out, okay? This is how it happened, okay? I actually, uh, uh, so 
one of my friends, okay? Uh, his name is Jason Mitchell, okay? He is the number one resale agent in Arizona and has now built, okay, the number one broker to broker referral company in the nation, okay? So when I moved here to Texas, okay, a few months into being here, he actually calls me up and says, hey, partner up with me, he says, and I will help you build out your brokerage company. And when did you move to Texas? Uh, I, I officially arrived here March 2019 and started real estate July of that year. Okay. okay. Steve, Steve, can you agree that Texas is the best state out there? Come on. Uh, Come on. Christian, Everything meant, is bigger in Texas. You meant to say the best country, but best it's okay. country. It's I know, seriously. Okay. No, really. In like so many ways, it is its own country. <laughs> if we had mountains here, it would be perfect. Exactly. So that's about the only thing that makes it not perfect. So, 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 so look at this. Here's out. So a relationship opened the door for me, you know, to actually be able to do that. Yeah. You know? And so one of the things that's amazing about this industry, whether an investor and or a real estate agent is relationships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Doors began to open up whenever you do things with, with excellence. Mm -hmm. Doors open up whenever you do things the right way. You know, doors yeah. open up whenever you become the best, you know, mm -hmm. in the sense of you being the best you could be and so on. And so, you know, so, so, so he hits me up. He's like, Hey man, let's partner together. And I was like, this is amazing. Let's go. And that opened up this massive door we have now. I love that. And we were just talking about relationships yeah. on uh, the last podcast or last two, how important relationships are in this industry. I mean, you, you can try to do stuff on your own, but you're not going to get very far unless you develop relationships with other people. Yeah, exactly. Uh, b the, um, building relationships and, and, you know, at some point you're going to have to build a team, which, um, you know, Steve has, Steve has been able to do. It's just, it's so key in this industry. Yeah. yeah. Look at this. Okay. On relationships. Okay. <laughs> Let me say this real quick. All right. Now look at this. It's so powerful. Okay. <clears throat> you know, you know, we hear one, one puts, a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand to flight. That's good. Check out. Look at this. In business, okay, <laughs> the best business requires being creative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, on that note, okay, in order to be creative, you know, the word really comes from create, from creation, or from birth. Okay. Mm -hmm. In order for there to be a birth, okay, two things are needed. All right. Number one is passion, love. Come on, for all those you know, married folk out there. You know I what thought, I'm saying? I thought babies got here via storks. <laughs> I know, seriously. Is that not true? <laughs> <laughs> and then two is this: you need someone else. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the best businesses are oftentimes found in relationships. Mm -hmm. So I love. Look at this. What Vince and Christian have is special and one of my favorite things is is it's done in relationship yeah but yeah. so you know, i mean like one of the one of the best companies that was ever founded was you know we we think of apple as just steve jobs but there was another steve behind that you know steve wozniak and yeah, they mm -hmm. in their garage you know 100%. those two dudes just gave it everything they got and really did it with excellence and now look at apple obviously the probably most known yeah. company in the world for sure so steve obviously People is a big thing for you and your company. Um, what else do you think or you feel differentiates yourself from other brokerages out there? I think, look at this, check this out. One of the biggest things I think is this, okay? We're living in the year 2020. And so I believe that we're leading in technology. Okay. I think we are leading uh, 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 in the way people access information i believe we are we, we 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 are leading in the sense of we we are we are moving forward in how we do things not trying to hold on to old ways mm -hmm. that aren't working uh uh, uh as effective anymore mm -hmm. you know so you know 
one of the things we, we, we do really big here is video, you know? Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. And so, as a matter of fact, that's how I built my own business when I got started. I just went all in on video. If you haven't noticed, I stutter. So if I'm getting stuck here, it's because I have a, a speech impediment. Mm -hmm. And so when I started to do video, it was, it, it was something that saved me in many ways because I can edit out my stuttering, <laughs> you know? Now, now my speech has improved a lot, you know? But it's crazy, look at this. Video has a power, okay? that something written doesn't have, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I see video as the handshake before a face-to-face -face meeting ever happens. As yeah. a matter of fact, I have recruited real estate agents by sending them a video on my phone, and then all of a sudden, just because they're able to see me, they see who I am, how I'm speaking, and so on, a trust is built. There's there's something crazy that 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 happens whenever uh, 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 video is involved in real estate and so on. You know, so that's just one example of so many other things that I believe separates us w when it comes to you know who we are as a real estate. That's so good. I, I think I, I need to touch on what you you just talked about. You say you have a speech impediment, which is um, it's kind of mind blowing to hear you talk uh, and to see what you do. Obviously we go to the same church and I, I got to see you preach uh, three, four weeks crazy. ago. Dude, that was, that was <laughs> everyone said that that was one of the funniest sermons they heard. You were just, <laughs> you're just going on it, dude. But what's so cool is though, you don't let that hold you back. And I think this is something that people need to, to hear in this moment right now mm -hmm. is, is this is, this comes back to mindset. You Absolutely. didn't, you didn't let something that you were born with or whatever de define who you were going to be or the success that you were going to have, you've pushed through it and you have, I mean, I think you're, you're one of the best speakers that, that, that we see or that I get to see, That's you know, especially you. on uh, Instagram, like you're, yeah. I love, I love your good morning uh, yeah. <laughs> coffee things on. If you haven't seen the Steve's, famous good morning, uh -huh, <laughs> follow Steve right now on Instagram. What's your handle? Uh, it's just my, my, uh, my first name, last name. Steve Panate. Find him. And every morning around 5 or 6 o'clock, he does this good morning thing. And it's just so funny. But uh, you're just a phenomenal speaker. You're very gifted. Well, and, you're, you. and you don't let it you don't let your speech impediment hold you back. And that, that's inspiring to me because I, uh, I think I do good behind a microphone. But when it comes to like being out in public, I don't want to do it at all. You're on and video I, now. I know. You're I'm on video. video. <laughs> and so it's... Uh, it's hard for me, and you're you're not even letting it stop you, and I think that's that's yeah, that, that that's, speaks to you. So that's humbling. awesome. You know, one of the things that 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 uh, you know, people ask me, you know, what I did, you know, like 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 uh, to to uh, 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 in many ways, what I did to overcome, I guess, my fear, you know, and so so, so one of the things I. I love saying is this, give yourself permission to start, mm -hmm. you know? And so, 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 uh, uh, so why I say it like that, it's because everyone always wants to start here. At the top. Yeah. yeah. At the top, True. you know? And so, so, uh, and because of that, because people know when they start, they are going to suck when they start they are going to fail when they start it's not going to go as planned so many people never give themselves permission to start simply because of the feeling of not being able to be where they see themselves here in their heart mm -hmm. that's good yeah you know to the reality of where they are at starting out, you know? So if I'm honest with you, you know, I said, hey, Steve, look at this. You are gonna find yourself in places where you are gonna crash and burn, <laughs> you know? But unless I give myself permission to have those moments where I am going to be embarrassed, I am gonna fail, I, I you know, might look dumb, I, might sound weird and so on, you know? So I gave myself permission, mm -hmm. you know, to start. 
And so it's like everything. So many people, for example, you know, so many families that are in debt right now, okay? They fear and feel they have no way they could ever achieve a place of buying a house. And so because what's in their heart is up here, mm -hmm. they never allow themselves permission to start, mm. you know, yeah, to just where start they're paying at. It off. And mm -hmm. so unless, <clears throat> unless you understand that, that if you never start, you'll never see what's in your heart. Man, that's so good. Yeah. You know, and so give yourself permission to be horrible at whatever is in your heart right now. But I'm telling you, this is a promise, you know, it's like a muscle. The more you do it, you'll get better little by little. And one day you'll just wake up and it's like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. you know, how am I here? But here is probably one year later, four years later, six years later, oh my gosh, I'm out of debt. And you look back and realize eight years in the making just to get out of debt, yeah. but you've arrived. Yeah, that's really good, Steve. I think one of the- That was good. Uh, two, yeah. I, have, I have a couple of thoughts. <laughs> two of the things I, I got from that was um, we have to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. because, I love that. Yeah. So good, Christian. Without, without I, I hear it all the time from people that are like asking me, how do I do this? How do I do that? How do I move forward from where I'm at uh, right now in life? And one of the things that really stops people is the uncomfortable. They're like, I'm scared to do this. I'm scared to do that. But you just have to, I like to think of it as forcing yourself to be in these uncomfortable positions on purpose so you can get used to the feeling. I love that. And then just continue moving forward, gaining momentum. Uh, another thing too is the permission to start. I, I think people have these big goals and to them it's just so big and daunting that they forget about the small steps to get to that big thing. So even though a small step might like one day might seem like a small thing, but they don't realize that those small steps are building momentum to the large thing. Mm, so just sit good. back, yeah, yeah. Just sit back and think about the small steps. And of course, you still got the the bigger picture in sight, but focusing on the small steps to get to that bigger picture. Yeah, and everyone thinks that an overnight success is literally overnight, but they don't see the years and the crazy amount of hours that these people yeah. have put in to then finally be a success. Absolutely. You know, no one no one literally just wakes up one day and is like, I want to be a millionaire. <laughs> and then the next day they wake up and they're a millionaire. Like there's so much that went into them being a success or to overcoming uh, whatever that is that they wanted to get to. You know, it's... Um, uh, I can't remember this quote, but it's, it's something like, you know, uh, when when people are putting in like all these crazy amounts of steps to get to where they are, or they're, they're oh, it's a shit's the shovel quote. I don't know if you've ever heard of this analogy, not a quote. Uh, someone's digging and digging and digging and digging and digging, and they think that they're they've just dug so much that they're never going to get there, and they stop. Little did they know that just three more feet was that pot of gold yeah, that they were going for. Yeah, yeah. You know, yep. like if you just keep that. pushing through, <laughs> you're almost there. So. That's just, yeah, my little nugget. Uh, Steve, so what are some struggles that you faced and overcome in your, uh, in your experience thus far? Yeah, so, so uh, I would honestly say, look at this, okay. People might perceive that I am, I am a person who, who, who is very uh, <clears throat> confident, you know, but if I'm honest with you, my gosh, that has been one of my biggest, biggest, like, uh, uh, um, I guess, mind hurdles, you know, and um, one of the biggest reasons why is because of my speech, you know, and so uh, I remember, you know, when I started real estate, uh, my biggest fear was this, I would meet a client and, and my speech would be so bad <laughs> They would feel like, you know, something's off with me and like not want to work with me, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and and on the other spectrum, I remember when, you know, people started asking me to speak, mm. you know, and so um, it's funny because uh, I had spoken a lot prior already being being uh, uh, in in uh, in ministry, you know, but, uh, you know, the conversations are very different in the business world, you know? And so, uh, so I 
I always, uh, um, uh, I always struggled, you know, with with the mindset or the thought of feeling qualified. Mm-hmm. That's you good. Know? And so it, it's a, 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 I think uh, you know that's something um, that I've learned, you know, how to hold on to my faith in God on a on a on a personal level where you know so much of what I do I know that in my own strength I'm not smart enough you know uh, 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 I'm not uh, you know uh, the the uh, the best at and so on you know so one thing I've really held on is this if if I am in a place where I feel like that I know I'm there for a reason. That's good. Purpose. Yeah. You know, so in that, I find my strength that, all right, God, I'm going to need you behind me out here. Mm-hmm. That's so good. I, I, you know, this, um, things like this, when someone has something they overcome, I, I, I don't know why I just always go to Moses, you know, like he was probably one of the most influential figures in the Bible. And he, uh, he wasn't great at speech. Yeah. You know, yeah. he didn't yeah. want to do probably one of the greatest callings in the Old Testament. And then, Absolutely. you know, look at, look at what happened when he obeyed. And it's crazy because Moses was asked probably one of life's biggest question. Like for real, Moses was asked, okay, one of the biggest questions everyone needs to ask themselves, okay? It's when God asked him, what's in your hand, Moses? So look at this. It's incredible, okay? Because Moses had all of these excuses that I can't speak, mm-hmm. okay? But in his hand was a staff, okay? And then that staff would literally serve him not only to pastor millions of people, yeah. but that staff would also, what was the staff that was placed in a sea that was split open. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And it's incredible because look at this, why that question is so important is because every single one of us has something in our hand. It's a gift (laughs) that was placed in you by God. And it's amazing because you might be uh, 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 hearing this podcast right now and saying, well, you know, I don't have much. I want to let you know right now there's something in your hand that was placed there the moment you were born. And right now there's a question. What are you doing with what God has given you? Mm. It could be in ability to write, to paint, to sing, to sell real estate, be in business, start a business, whatever it is, what's in your hand. And I believe the moment you're able to grab a hold of that, I believe is the moment that you are going to be able to step into a season in your life where doors are going to open and you are going to experience the feeling of being fulfilled, knowing that you are doing something on purpose (laughs) on this earth. So good. You can't see my smirk on on the podcast, but (laughs) just because the whole time that you're talking, I feel like I'm... Uh, just, you're just dropping fire, dude. Like somebody's about to get saved on this podcast or this video. <laughs> Sorry <laughs> to get all spiritual no, on you. No, you know no we, we talk about God in, in many of our episodes uh, and about our faith, but it's it's so good, dude. Like you're, geez, like I was smiling so much because I feel like a lot of what you're saying is is a lot of what is in our hearts for this podcast. Mm-hmm. You know, for people to That's awesome. to to ex, to um, succeed in their gifts and. Man, you're just whew, it's good. It's getting hot in here, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. That's awesome. So, you said earlier um, that everybody wants to make money, and 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 that's true. And one thing I will say is, um, you know, when you're led just by pursuing the money, you probably won't get that far. But when you have a reasoning behind it, like people leaving a legacy, mm. that 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 journey. Uh, to building whatever you want to build is going to be much farther. So um, on average, I've seen and read that Texas real estate agents make around 45 per year. 
Um, now, True. how does an agent go from the 45K to, let's just say, a six-figure earner? Uh, and, I mean, what have you experienced and seen agents do to pretty much up that? And especially, before you answer that, in DFW. Because yeah. I think in DFW, there's, I'm, I'm, I'm going to botch the number, but the number of real estate agents that are in this market is unreal. The competition Absolutely. is unreal. So, yeah, how do you make six figures in cool. this industry? How do you become a six-figure agent in three minutes? Here you go. If you're, <laughs> if, you're, <laughs> if you're watching this or listening. So uh, it is true. Look at this. The average real estate agent you are seeing on your social media, whether it's Facebook, whatever it is, okay, is probably living paycheck to paycheck. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, you know, it's very easy to look flashy, <laughs> you know? Uh, 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 but the reality is, is that the majority of real estate agents, you know, are not living a lavish lifestyle, you know? And so, uh, uh, um, so it is crazy. Real quick story about that. Okay. Check this out. So, so as I stated earlier, okay, I had no idea I would see, you know, a level of success, mm -hmm. you know, pretty fast and so on yeah. and so so i remember when i started real estate uh uh i honestly started to save every single penny i was making and i was saving it saving it saving it saving it and you're so, on that dave ramsey plan <laughs> i really was probably to like the extreme and so on i remember my 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 uh uh after i finished my second year of real estate uh the following year, I, I actually paid my mom's house off. No way. And wow. so it was it was a dream. I remember Man. she was crying. I was crying. Brothers were crying. I mean, everyone was crying. You know, it was a dream being able to to to, you know, say, hey, mom, you will no longer have a mortgage. That is phenomenal. You know, and so uh, so so it is possible. Mm -hmm. You know, to to make money in real estate. Now, now look at this. I think one of the most important things you have to do is this: going in, understand, okay, okay, understand what you have to sell in order to make six figures. You know, so very easy math. I'm not gonna go into it into uh, 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 into factual. Uh, numbers and so on, you know, but you have to estimate, okay? The average house here in DFW probably sells for about 280,000 per se, let's say, you know, that's a big window in Fort Worth. It's probably a little less, you know, some parts in, in Dallas, you know, is probably right around there, a little higher in other areas and so on, you know? Mm -hmm. So based off of, off of those numbers and off of the commissions earned for an agent to actually to actually net six figures, you probably have to be selling about 25 houses a year. Wow. That's two a month. Yeah. Okay, yeah. You know, that, that, that's two houses a month at the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. Okay, just to, uh, to, to clear six figures comfortably. You know, that's after paying your taxes as well, you know, you because think that's after paying your broker too. because, uh, yeah, correct. Okay. You know, so, 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 so <laughs> gross, you know, gross, you probably only have to sell about 20 houses to hit six figures, more or less. Okay. These are estimated numbers and so on, you know, but to actually net after you pay your taxes, cause uncle Sam wants mm -hmm. his cut, <laughs> you know, you, you probably have to, you know, make it a goal up front okay if i want to live a six-figure lifestyle sooner rather than later what's what's the fastest route i can sell 25 houses you know so working backwards okay you have that in mind that's your goal up front so many agents start off oh i just want to sell homes and make money okay but you know <laughs> like, like 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 you know how much money you know how many houses you want to sell my perspective is this i always say it like this how many families do i have to help that's good you know, mm -hmm. in order to make six figures, I think that's a better perspective than how many houses. It doesn't matter which way you do it. Okay, but look, this out. So, so from that perspective, now, now <laughs> the questions you have to ask yourself is what behaviors, what, what, 
What business activities do I have to be doing every single week that will allow me mm -hmm. to generate enough leads that I can close 25 transactions a year? Okay, look at this. One of the biggest mistakes real estate agents make when they start off is thinking they have to know everything about the contracts and legal terms and so on. Listen to me right here. That's why you have a broker. Just ask them. Your focus, every ounce of your focus should be what do I have to do that generates me leads? If you have no leads, you'll never have a contract to write. Mm, true. It's good. Okay? Lead generation is the secret in real estate and it's one of the hardest or or it's the hardest thing to do and it's why most real estate agents can never make it uh, full time and living a comfortable six figure lifestyle because they never learn how to lead generate. Think about that. What act, uh, what, 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 what things am I doing in my business every single week that are allowing me to generate leads? Mm. That should be your focus. Your business rises and falls on you being able to generate leads. And so one of the best ways to actually do that is to become the go-to person. Everyone has to know what you do. Mm -hmm. Whenever someone sees a for sale sign, they have to think, Steve, that's how I think. When someone's watching a show, you know, million dollar listing, fixer up or whatever it is, but a house is on, the, the, the house is a focus. My goal is to make it that they think of Steve. Oh, Steve's a real estate agent. Whenever they see me at the market, I want them to think Steve's a real estate agent. Whenever they see me at the restaurant, oh, Steve's a real estate agent. Now, how do you do that without being annoying? Mm -hmm. You know, how do you do that without being the used car salesman? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. These are things you have to ask yourself because look at this. I say it this way, okay? As a real estate agent, you have to position yourself mentally to think I have to become a marketer before I can be a real estate agent. That's good. You know, real estate school teaches you how to stay out of jail. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> you know, real estate school does not teach you how to build a business. Mm -hmm. Real estate school does not teach you how to generate leads. Nope. So these are all questions that you need to go and find answers to. How am I going to become the best lead generator in my city, in my area, in my neighborhoods, and so on? And so, yeah. Steve, those are, those are really good points. And even on the investor side as well, you have to put out there what you're doing. I mean, I, I've got yeah. a few deals from people just knowing that, hey, Christian does real estate. I'm a, let me see if he wants to buy this house. Yeah. Um, and, and so you have to, uh, like you said, you have to, um, how to find out whether or not you're being annoying is something you're going to have to discover on your own um, and not being that car smell, salesman, um, you know, pitch. But just, just showing people what you're doing, talking about your projects, your deals, educating people. They're gonna catch on, and or just posting like you and I do uh, our completed flips or whatever. Yeah, you know, just people see what we do. Posting projects, recommending books. You know, people are gonna catch on, and they're gonna start coming to you for advice. Launching a podcast. Yeah, podcast. Yeah, you name it. I yeah. love this. Mm -hmm. And sure. you said Christian does real estate. Christian's Instagram handle is Christian does real estate. That's give that's, him a follow. I, yeah, <laughs> thanks for that. Uh, Where'd, you actually... that? Where'd you get that from? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I got the idea from this guy. Your boy. <laughs> um, so I was like, you know what, that that might work. So I changed it um, because I want to be known as. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And it, it's crazy. We actually have a president elect among us. <laughs> oh, we do. Vince <laughs> <laughs> actually recently Ooh, switched his handle. Here we handle. go. Here we go. But, uh, we won't get political yeah, right we'll now. Yeah, we'll say that for my show that I'm going to launch that where it's a no-holds-barred po uh, podcast where I can talk about all things political. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, I mean, if you can be president-elect, uh, I'll just stop. Um, so let's just shift gears a little bit. Um, so we've talked about all the things real estate, but let's talk about like um, legacy, things like these. Like obviously we do things for a reason and we have our why. So what do you, Steve, want your legacy to be at the end of it all? Like what do you want to leave behind? Well, okay. 
First off, I want to feel like I'm dying empty. Like I tried everything, you know? Uh, um, uh, like, like I went after what was in my heart, you know? I don't want to feel like, man, what if I would have done that, you know? Mm-hmm. What if I, would, I would rather fail and then say, hey, you know what? I tried. I love that. You know? It didn't work. Who cares? You know what I'm saying? Most people die never even trying. Yeah, and it's sad. You know? And so, uh, 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 so number one, I honestly want to die empty. Like, you know what? I tried everything that was in my heart. You know? Some worked. Some didn't. But hey, you know what? Life was fun. You know? And, and, uh, and if you follow me on my social medias, you know that I'm a big time um, girl dad. Mm-hmm. You know? I love it. So I have daughters, uh, uh, and so at home, uh, it's three girls, one of them is my wife, uh, uh, and it's me, you know, uh, right now at least. And so, you're, you're you know, outnumbered for sure. <laughs> check this out. It's crazy, okay? So it's, look at this. I am going to be vulnerable right now. You guys ready? I'm ready for it. Okay, check this out. So, so when real estate started to explode on me, okay? I mean, just explode, okay? Esther was pregnant. Esther is my wife. She was pregnant, okay? Uh, uh, and so that morning, I remember, or one morning, she leaves to work, okay? So I stay home, and I usually would leave after her, okay? But then that morning, I'm like, you know what? She's gone. So I went on my couch, and I binge-watched um, <laughs> Breaking Bad. <laughs> oh man. Okay. So I remember being on 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 episode like four that morning, you know. And to be honest with you, I actually had an appointment that morning, which I pushed back just so I could stay home and like <laughs> do nothing. You know what I'm saying? And so I remember, okay, thinking in my head, okay, after I was there, episode one was funny. It was awesome, you know. Episode two, I remember. Episode four, I was on my couch, uh, uh, and then, you know, I don't know what it was, but, like, something, something hit me where I felt extremely guilty. That's called the Holy Spirit. You know, yeah, seriously, <laughs> extremely guilty. And then my thought was this. I don't ever, ever want, you know, my daughter to walk in on her dad and then he's doing absolutely nothing Mm. you know just wasting his life away i'm not Mm -hmm. saying there isn't room for those moments and so on you know but honestly that was just a random wednesday morning you know Mm. where 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 i had work and i was like you know what i got money in the bank right now i'm good (laughs) i was gonna chill and relax and so on Mm -hmm. and it really hit me i don't ever want my family you know to think of their father or husband as the guy that always just hung out and did absolutely nothing and so you know what i did it was i think 1 p.m ish you know so i showered (laughs) and then i i honestly went into the office i'm like you know what it was an awesome morning by the way (laughs) i will admit you know and i did finish uh season five i think it is right i don't know i never watched it like a month later and so on okay don't watch it if you haven't started <laughs> right. i don't recommend it maybe but anyway look at this <laughs> but 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 uh uh but but you know look at this with with them in mind you know i i want to go to the grave and like they always saw their father present you know they always saw Their father, one of the things that every holiday, I always think about this, you know, my presence matters more than presence. That's so true, dude. You know, Mm -hmm. my presence. And so, you know, yes, I plan on leaving them, you know, money and houses, hopefully, and, you know, all this and that and so on, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, I, I... I, I honestly want to hear them say my dad was always there. 
Mm. You know, my dad was present. We always saw my dad working hard for us. We always saw my dad, you know, and, and so, so, you know, that's so good. That's that could largely be because I was raised without my dad, mm -hmm. you know, but one thing I have really learned is this, okay? People will forget what you said, but people will never forget how they felt when you said what you said. I love that. I love you that know, so much. That's why so many people, if you ask them on Wednesday, hey man, how was the message on Sunday? Oh my gosh, I don't remember, but it was awesome. <laughs> because people will always, will always value the presence. That's so good. That okay? is so good. They always value how they felt mm -hmm. more than what was said. So presence over presence. I want that to be my legacy in business. Steve was always there, you know, man. He was always, you know, helping. He was always there, you know, with like words that like lifted us up. What do you say? I don't know, but it was just awesome being there. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, something shifted. Presence over presence. Yes, I have goals with, you know, houses and business and this and that and so on, you know, but presence over presence all day. I love that. I have a tattoo on my side that says, <laughs> all you can take with you is that which you've given away. It's from uh, It's a Wonderful Life, that movie from the 40s. And I just saw it in a, a quick shot and I really loved it because at the end of the day, you know, when, when life's over, all that we can literally take is what we've given away to other people. Yeah. Yeah. You can't take your fancy car, you can't take your, you know, gazillion dollar house or your watches, nothing. All mm -hmm. you can take away is how you made other people feel and what you did for them. So good. And yeah. for your kids, you know, like like you were saying, it's more important for you to be there for your kids than to make a certain amount of money for them. They're going to if if you were completely broke but you were home all the time with them, not because you're a bum, but you know what I'm saying, where I'm going, but you you spent time with them, you played with them, you went to their games and you were there for them. That means more to them than, yeah, we had a nice house and we had a jet. Like that, 100%. that doesn't matter at the end of the day. 100%. At I, all. I, I always say, I, I honestly never knew how little we had because my mom always made everything so great. That's so good, dude. So you know, yeah, so sort of my mom, we, I didn't learn till, till later. One of the houses that we lived in was this like, 14 by 60 something mobile home that we paid like or she paid $6,800 for $6,800 dude <laughs> but like we I never knew how like and my mom would be okay with me sharing this like we were probably living living in poverty yeah but I had no idea I yeah. had everything that I wanted she always and she was still there too I don't know how this woman did it it's awesome. but mm -hmm. yeah I mean that's just that's just way more important than making a gazillion dollars or whatever, yeah. you know? So that's good. That's awesome. That is so good. Um, yeah, we just got two more questions as we wrap up. And these are uh, questions that we ask. Uh, we've only, I think we've only had one guest, but the goal is to have a uh, guest answer one these guest. questions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> whew, how do you transition from that? That was just so good. That was deep. Yeah. yeah. Um, you what's, are awesome. You're awesome, dude. What is the favorite... Your, uh, what is your favorite business-related book that you've ever read? Oh, man. You know what? <clears throat> My gosh. Okay, just say uh, Fire Shot. I would say uh, um, favorite business book. Um, okay, The Four Elements of Success. It's by Lori Beth Jones. Okay. okay. Uh, 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 and so in that book, uh, you really learn how to speak with every type of person hmm. uh and so so it uh, uh uh from a business perspective you know that has that has really shifted everything i do because i've learned how to read a person right up front and then learn how they need to be spoken to mm, that's really good you know so uh it's a powerful book the best thing about it is that it's a short read. If I can read it, I promise you this, okay? <laughs> it's one of the few books I have read from front to back, The Four Elements of Success, Lori Beth Jones. It's an amazing book. Sweet. Awesome. What are some favorite quotes 
or or one quote or one verse that you live by yes. that inspires you? What do you want to leave with people right now? All right. So uh, in my real estate business, the quote I've always said, it's been by business model. It's this life is about people. Real estate is about people. And so everything we do, whether we know it or not, whether we see it or not, everybody has a level of influence. And so from that perspective, you, as you are listening right now, there is a level of influence. You, you are responsible to steward and someone on the other side of what you do is waiting for you to step into it. I love it. That's so good. Well, I think that about wraps it up, Steve. Thank you so much for doing this interview with us. It was um, fun, man. If you didn't get saved or your life didn't get wrecked, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you were listening. So, uh, it was man, awesome. yeah, thank you so thank much you for being here. Be here. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you and uh, we'll see you guys on the next episode. This episode of the Middle Class to Millionaires podcast has ended, but be sure to subscribe for more tips and strategies on entrepreneurship, life, and business to help you create the life you've always dreamed of. Don't forget to rate and review so we can continue to bring you the best content on planet Earth.